Are you particularly concerned about the, the, the blowout that we've seen this year compared to last year in the road toll over Easter? It is significant. This Easter road toll is uh, at six, and uh, last year we had two. So it is concerning to the police. We had a highly visible and a well-publicised media campaign prior to our operation. We told everyone we'd be out there on the roads in force. We are there in force, and it's still disappointing and a tragedy to see six uh, lives lost. Aren't you seeing DUIs down and speeding down, though? Um, the figures for speeding this year, we've, um, we've detected in excess of 14,500 people speeding, and I think that's down um, possibly 800 from uh, last year or thereabouts. Um, and our drink driving, um, we've undertaken in excess of 91,500 uh, roadside breath tests uh, and detected 427, so that is down from last year. They are still two of the fatal four and contribute significantly to fatal and serious crashes, so we will continue to uh, police that and we'll continue to take people off the road if they continue to undertake that behaviour. If you're looking at those two and they're both down, is there a sense that it could just be luck or bad luck? Last year was a particularly lucky year, or this year is just an unlucky year. If you're down on the two, two of the major four, why are we up on the others? Well, the, the investigations into the fatal crash, crashes are still continuing, and uh, I don't know the specific uh, causes at this time. Um, I don't know whether it is uh, drink driving or alcohol involved or speed involved at this time. So we'll, we'll, we'll undertake those investigations, ascertain what the causes were, and then if we need to uh, realign or, or target those, those behaviours, uh, not just next year, but continually, then we'll do that as well. I, I realise you can't talk to the specific yeah. colleagues at Air Jackson, but <clears throat> given that several of them at least seem to have involved single vehicle rollovers on, on fairly long stretches of road, are you concerned about fatigue and the issue of driver attention? Fatigue is, again, one of the fatal four, and, and that is a significant, again, as I said, a contributing factor to crashes. Um, it's a big state, Queensland. People do tend to travel long distances and long, over long periods of time, and we are out there to try and stop people and pull them over and, and make them aware of, of what they're doing. There are drive reviver um, stops throughout the state. It's well publicised. We try and tell people to pull over every two hours and have a break. Uh, distractions, we try to tell people to concentrate when they're driving, don't get distracted. Uh, if someone else is in the vehicle, they can use the maps or, or look at the satellite navigations or answer phones. It's, it's a serious business driving. We want people to concentrate while they're doing that and get to their destination safely. Craig, you know, the, the tragic, I guess, development after, from that um, crash at Tiara, um, from that uh, crash, there's been two people. Uh, there's been two deceased: a 38-year-old female, uh, the driver of uh, one of the vehicles involved, and a 23-week-old uh, unborn fetus um, has also passed away. The mother was injured, um, and she's lost her unborn child. How is the mother? Uh, I don't. I don't know that information. Obviously, that case is tragic on a, a broader scale. This must be frustrating to keep getting figures like. Every death on our roads tragic, and that's why police and other emergency services are out there 24-7, day in and day out, regardless of the weather, trying to stop these crashes occurring. It's a tragedy to the family. It's a tragedy to every family when, uh, when someone loses a life. It's a tragedy to their community, their workplaces, and it, it has a significant impact uh, on, on everyone and, uh, and also on the police and emergency services who have to go and deal with these crashes day in and day out. And again, that's why we tell people that we're out there, that's why we tell people not to speed, not to drink drive, drive to the road rules and the conditions, and hopefully they'll get, their, get to their destination safely. For people tonight who might be driving home from a regional area of the state, do you think those are, are areas of particular concern given the distances? We continually get messages out every day. We're getting messages out about, about what's happening on our road network. We know that there's people driving today uh, that will be driving some distances to return home after a holiday period. And again, we ask them to just stay safe, be patient, and follow the road rules and the conditions that exist, and hopefully they'll get home safely. Craig, with that little bub in mind, would you appeal to drivers out there to not only think of them, I guess when they're out driving, not just think of them, what would happen to themselves, think about what a crash could do to other people? That's, that's the, the point that the police don't, uh, we can't comprehend. People undertake reckless and dangerous behaviour and they put not only themselves at risk but other people at risk. 
because of their own behaviour. It's selfish, and they're the people that we want to get off our roads. We've impounded uh, 85 cars uh, over the Easter period, so that's 85 vehicles that people can't use to undertake this reckless and dangerous behaviour. Well, you can't get more innocent than an unborn baby, can you? But, but there's a lot of innocent people uh, dying in road crashes and get seriously injured in road crashes uh, every day that is a result of other people's reckless behaviour. And they're the people that we want to get off our roads. They're the, they're the minority, but they, they do cause substantial tragedy to other road users and other Queenslanders. What they um, well, that'd be our anti-herning offences, which is uh, they could be uh, driving illegally, modified vehicles, speed racing, uh, drink driving, driving unregistered or disqualified, those sort of offences. If you're continuing to see drivers driving fatigued and pushing on past that two-hour barrier, is the time police started to look at mandating those two hours, would you call for more powers to be able to control that? It's very hard to... to um, determine how long is enough in fatigue. I mean, there's studies that say that you can bank up sleep. So you can bank up sleep and then you will be less fatigued if you know you're going to have a, a period where you have less sleep. It's very hard to put a figure on what's, what's a, a time limit that would make someone more fatigued than someone else. Uh, there's a lot of uh, physiological issues that, that come into factor with fatigue. So it's very hard to actually determine what at what level people should. That's why uh, we use the two hours driver reviver message to have a break and even change drivers if need be. Done. Done. Thank you.